It couldn't possibly be any more beautiful. I can think of something that would make it more beautiful. If you married me. I just whipped it out. You mean right there on the beach? <laughs> <laughs> All right, very funny, Barry. But it was incredibly romantic. I'm sure it was. <laughs> All right, come on, you guys. Our man Nate here has decided to pull the trigger. So I say we raise our glasses and toast. Yeah, <laughs> oh, she's the one. You meet somebody, you spend time with them, you fall in love and you want to spend the rest of your life with them. Just got engaged. For yeah, yeah. I am ecstatic that I'm getting married to Julia. I mean, she's the most incredible person I've ever met, not to mention beautiful. And she gets that ring, poof. Love, it's a beautiful thing meant to be cherished. We have a very special love, Julia. <laughs> of course we do, baby. Really special. We know each other. Now, <laughs> how are the invitations coming? Great. Wait, what table are we going to put Shri at now? And I'm actually his fiance. Ah, lucky devil. It's Nathan Roberts, <laughs> my husband. To be. Right, to be, my husband to be. Just let me know when the wedding is and I'll be there, buddy. So the wedding band's going to cost a fortune, but it's worth it. I always wanted a small orchestra. I just feel like a rock and roll band isn't classy enough for us. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's a once in a lifetime event, right? I'm just glad we have money to pay for all this wedding stuff. And now we're gonna probably have to scale back on the wedding. What? Well, I just lost my job. I don't have any income. Well, can't you sell some stuff? Like what, Amway? I mean, some of your assets. How about stocks and bonds? That's my rainy day fund. This is a rainy day, Nate. Julia, the wedding is a bit lavish. We're spending, and when I say we, I mean I am spending the lion's share of almost $150,000. It's our wedding day, Nate. I want it to be special. Honey, if it was just you and me and the justice of the peace, it would be special. Don't even suggest that. Why not? Because it's my because it's our wedding. And we're gonna do it once, forever. I want a little pomp and circumstance. But there's so much pomp. I mean, the orchestra and the violinists and the lavish decorations and the expensive ballroom and the camera crew and all those people we don't know eating that expensive catered food. I mean, honey, I spent $50,000 on your engagement ring alone. Is that <gasps> enough? Could you even tell me how much it was? Because you seem to think it's nothing. <sighs> Look, I want nothing more than for us to be married. But it's about being bonded together forever, not the frills. But I like the frills. I like the pretty dress and the decorations and the ballroom and the camera crew following us around everywhere, preserving it forever. What is so wrong with that? Nothing, but I just lost my job. And I might not get it back. And I don't know what I'm gonna do. You'll figure something out. And money's become a big thing for us. I mean, the wedding is getting really expensive. Well, honey, what kind of a relationship would we have if we didn't believe each other? Exactly. I mean, think of the freedom we would have to do whatever we wanted. We could wander the country hitching rides. We could stow away on a cruise ship until we got to Hawaii. I saw this man. He attached himself to the outside of a plane on a transatlantic flight and he survived. The human will is an amazing thing. And then we could live on the beach in Hawaii. You know I've always wanted to live on the beach in Hawaii. I mean, ideally, I'd like to live in a house on the beach. I will always take care of you. I don't want you to worry about anything. I sure do love you. <laughs> You're the best. I was the love of your life. And you were mine. We were going to get married because we loved each other. And that was all that was important. But now you don't even know me. And I would do anything to get you back. Just 
to have you back here with me, the way it was. How perfect our life was. I just really need that. And I think about being with someone else if you never come back. But the truth is, I don't want someone else. I would wait forever for you. If that's what it took, Nate, because I do love you. Remember who I am. Remember who you are. Remember who we are to each other. Oh, Nathan. Wow, you look just beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I can't believe after all this craziness, it's finally here. Well, you earned it. <laughs> and now, this is your reward. Oh, Thank you so much. I feel so blessed. Uh, funny. All's well that ends well. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now, I can confidently enter into this union of marriage knowing I made a wise decision. Nah! It's almost go time. It sure is. I'm so glad everything worked out for you, honey. Oh, thank you, Franny. Oh. oh. What? What, you forget something? No, I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, do you want me to go with you? Uh, no. I think I need a little me time. Okay. I think it's gonna be a while before I'm alone again. Yeah, like 60 years. <laughs> okay, but hurry up because people are waiting. You don't wanna make them wait too long. You know what? I waited a long time for this moment. So if they have to wait a little bit, it's fine. Oh, I love you. I'll be right back. Okay. Where is she? I don't know. You know, women, everything's got to be perfect. She's probably just primping. What? Yes. He put a He had no idea. <laughs> yeah. Neither did I. Where is she? Well, maybe she got cold feet. Funny. Well, there she is. Should she be running? She looks mad. Yeah. Furious. Uh-oh. You. Honey? You tested me? How dare you? Oh, this is all some big game to you, huh? You lying, evil, selfish bastard! How could you do this? You said you loved me. Is this how you love someone? I had to know. You had to know? Well, now I know. I know what a turd you are. And all these people know what a turd you are. Hey, everybody, guess what my husband-to-be did? He tested me. No, no, not for STDs. He made up a bunch of shit to see how I'd respond. Isn't that right, shithead? Well... But you know what? I passed the test, but you failed. Because when you love someone, and I mean really love someone, you trust them and you live with it. For better or for worse, in sickness and in health, but not in deceit. You pretended to be in coma. I can't even begin to tell you how fucked up that is. She's right. Shut up. If all these witnesses were not here, I would shoot you dead. But you know what? You are dead. To me. So, uh... I guess everyone can go then. You broke your mother's heart. You broke my heart. You broke everyone at the wedding's heart. No, oh, I'm sorry, everyone at the non-wedding's heart, which is almost impossible to do. Most importantly, 
You broke that little girl's heart, which is the most unforgivable of all. Relationships are hard work. To test the woman you plan on spending the rest of your life with. And that the love of my life will never talk to me again. But that's life. You take the leap and you hope for the best. But I got the worst. And here's the problem. When you have real love, you can't just abandon that person. Even though they did something that no self-respecting person would ever imagine forgiving them for. Because you can't get them out of your heart. Because you keep seeing all those special tender moments. All the sweetness and the intimacies. You just can't forget, no matter how hard you try, they just won't go away. If there is anyone present who knows of any reason why these two should not be married, let them speak now or forever hold their peace. Trust me, we're good. <laughs>